Mr. Speaker, it's been 112 days since Hamas' horrific attacks on Israel on October 7th. It's also been one year and 11 months since Putin launched his brutal invasion of Ukraine. The world's on fire with conflict, and democratic countries are under attack. For months, Ukraine and Israel aid has been held hostage by a significant number of my Republican colleagues who appear to have taken the side of Russia. Putin and Iran's Ayatollah are enjoying these political fights, which is only giving them advantage. These war criminals, I'm talking about Putin and the Ayatollah, are seizing on opportunities regardless of the cost, just as Iran has ena enabled their terrorist proxies, the Houthis are attacking our military. Our actions today will determine the future success of democracies and free societies around the world. That's really what's at stake. I've been to Ukraine uh, twice in the last year. I've been to Israel many times. Democracy is critical in those parts of the world. They share our values and freedoms that we cherish. I've been to Gaza, where Hamas has oppressed the Palestinian people with poverty, violence, and a lack of opportunity, and use them as human shields. We must help the Palestinian people out of this horrific situation, starting with humanitarian aid. The Palestinians have a right to determine their own future under a two-state solution. We need to pass the supplemental aid package to provide immediate assistance, as we have before in a bipartisan effort. We need to equip Ukraine and Israel with the critical security and military needs to defend their sovereignties. By the way, we do this when we do this. We defend democracy, uh, our democracy, and democracies around the world. We do this in our own interests. Along with humanitarian aid for Palestinians and the Armenian refugees removed from their historical homes in Nagorno-Kova, these are all part of what the supplemental package does. And by the way, provides assistance for Taiwan. All this costs the United States less than 1% of our GDP without any U.S. troops on the ground. Let me repeat that. Less than 1% of our GDP. No U.S. troops are being impacted directly. Ukraine has regained 50% of the land of Russia originally took, and they've reopened the Black Sea to export grain. Impacts on Russia. Russia's lost over 315,000 troops and two-thirds of their pre-invasion tanks. I tell you, this has been a very good deal for our adversary, Russia, for us. And Ukrainian president has said in the chamber two years ago, this is an investment in global security and democracy. Also, we need to get the hostages released by Hamas that Israel has been working on, and there are negotiations taking place right now. We know that with the recent election in Taiwan, as a prime example, there is a new chapter in, in their future democracy. But we must send a strong message to Putin of Russia, to Xi of China, and the Ayatollah of Iran, and its terrorist proxies like Hezbollah and Hamas. These are adversaries, adversaries of the United States, and therefore we must be together as a country, as Americans, in a bipartisan fashion. So House Republicans who are demanding border security in exchange for this package, it's been put on the table. We're negotiating it. But if they're serious about border security, I think they would want to work and see the final language on the product that the Senate is working on before condemning it and criticizing it. Democrats have put forth dozens of bipartisan bills like the American Dream Act, the Promise Act, the Farm Worker Modernization Act, none of which have been brought forward as a vote, and many of them are bipartisan. As the bipartisan group of senators finalize their border deal, but unfortunately, extreme MAGA Republicans and Donald Trump want to torpedo it for what? Political reasons. The border is a problem, we agree, and we have a legislative solution before us. It is at the height of hypocrisy to say, well, no, we're not going to do anything right now. It's really a problem. It really is a problem. But we're going to wait for 10 months. My gosh, what's wrong with us? The American public gets this. President Biden's ready to sign this deal in its current form and to address the surge of migrants and hire more border patrol agents and to combat the flow of fentanyl and human trafficking. He's ready to do that now. We ought to be working together, not waiting to some election after November. 
Congress cannot lose sight of what's at stake. We can walk and talk and chew gum at the same time. We can get assistance to Ukraine, to Israel, along with border security. That's our job. That's what we're supposed to do. And by the way, get a budget, too. This Congress is doing nothing, absolutely nothing. So let's stop with the politics. Our national Gentlemen's security depends upon it. Let's get a deal done. I yield back the balance of my time. The chair now recognizes the gentleman from